Hi everyone and welcome back for another Gaming Grabs video with myself, Pixel Paul. Thanks for pressing play once again and thanks for joining me on the channel. So yeah, I've not done a Gaming Grabs video for a couple of weeks now, so I've got um, a few new games to show you. Um, going back probably about two weeks actually. Um, and I actually managed to have a bit of a 10 day break as well in between all of that from buying any games so i did quite well actually not to buy um any games uh, just a sort of self-imposed moment of restraint and you know don't don't buy any games during that 10 period 10 day period um i just didn't have a chance to get out really that was the main reason for it um so but no i did quite well really um but yeah i've grabbed a few games over the last few weeks other than in that little 10 day period um which i will go over with you now so um, what I want to do is I'll show you the games that I got It's roughly about two weeks ago now. Um, we nipped out to the Trafford Centre, which you'll know if you've watched any of my sort of previous Game & Grabs videos. <clears throat> um, when we go to Trafford Centre, I always go into Game in there, uh, and I've done pretty well in the past uh, in that store. And I've done all right this time as well. However, I think the chances are this could be one of the last decent hauls I probably get from that store and possibly any game store as well um, because well perhaps after I've gone through these games I might just have a little bit of a air my thoughts about the sort of future of a game in the UK and where it's going um, and you know what what maybe we can expect from them over the next few years possibly just me probably just venting a few thought, thoughts about them um, but first things first, let's have a look through the, the games that I picked up from there. So grab your cup of tea. Now, I apologise because some of these games, when you take these, and they're all pre-owned, the lesser spotted pre-owned games from Game, um, these are becoming a lot rarer in those stores now. Um, when you take them to the, 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 the counter or the till, um, sometimes they will just literally put the discs into the box that you've taken to the till or they will take uh, some of the games from um, the sort of uh, drawers from behind the counter so some of the games have the prices on some of them don't but I've got the receipts here just to make sure and double check that I've got the right prices that I picked these games up for so let's have a look through them and they're a bit of a mixed bunch to be quite honest um, a couple of them I've no there's actually one I've played before um, but in general, most of them I don't think I've actually played before. Um, they're all pretty low value, um, but but at the same time, sort of worth picking up. But maybe I'll let you you guys be the judge of that. But uh, I'll show you what I got. So uh, first up was Shaq Fu, uh, a Her Legend Reborn. These are all Xbox One games as well, by the way. Um, and yeah, I have played this one before. I played it on the PlayStation 4, and it's actually all right. It's a bit of a scrolling beat-em-up with Shaq. Um, a sequel to Shaq Fu on the Super Nintendo, I think it was originally. I think there was a Mega Drive version as well. Um, and it's all right, actually. It's quite good fun. But at 199 decent pickup. Uh, next up, <clears throat> and this is one you see around a lot, and it's really cheap. Um, and I've just never picked it up. Um, I did play a demo of this. Uh, going back a few years ago, I thought it was okay, but I've never picked up the full game. Um, and it is Prey again, that was 199 Xbox One. Um, again, it's a game you can pick up pretty cheap most places, it's it's price dropped really quickly. Um, it's when it first came out, they, they sort of touted it as being uh, a sequel to Prey, which came out on the Xbox 360. And for my money, I loved that game. I thought that was an amazing game. Uh, really clever use of sort of gravity and um, sort of physics and almost like Portal in a little, in a way. Um, but this has very little to do with that, I think. Um, but yeah, interesting to maybe have a look at this. Again, at 199 wanted to pick that up. So that's another... Uh, next up, again, 199 Lords of the Fallen. Don't know a huge amount about this one. Um, but yeah, like I say, all of these are Xbox One. Lords of the Fallen, complete edition, whatever that means on here. I suppose it's all, there's additional content. 
Um, but yeah, again, two quid. Uh, next up, and this one didn't have a price on it, but it's Just Cause 3. Uh, that was 99p, that one. Um, I played Just Cause 1 on PS2 and the second one on PlayStation 3, but never played Just Cause 3 or Just Cause 4. Um, they're a bit crazy, these games, aren't they? Um, this game actually has Just Cause 2 included as a download, I think. So, but yeah, 99p, can't go wrong. Uh, next up, this one was slightly more expensive. Um, yeah, and I've seen this one around quite a bit. Um, brand new, I think you can pick it up for about seven ninety nine, maybe eight ninety nine online. Certainly, um, I don't know a huge amount about it, <clears throat> but I know it's kind of a sort of Devil May Cry style shooty sort of hack and slash game. I think, um, but it is Gungrave Gore or G O R E. But yeah, Gungrave Gore. Always look quite interesting, cool front cover. That one was four ninety nine, so yeah, I was quite happy to grab that one. And next up, and again, there's no price on this one, but this was two ninety nine, and it is Kingdom Hearts three. And um, so I still haven't yet played any of the Kingdom Hearts games, and I was talking to someone, I think it was on Instagram, um, a few weeks ago, and they said for their money, Kingdom Hearts three was the best. Um, I don't know how. Um, much of a sort of general opinion that is, but apparently it's, it's pretty good this. So uh, yeah, nice one to add to the collection. I'm just gonna let my cat in. Come on. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, this was 4 99 and it's Tekken 7 Deluxe Edition. Um, slowly clocking up most of the Tekken games now on one format or another. Um, but yeah, four ninety nine. That seemed like quite a decent price. I haven't actually checked any of these games um, massively in depth and on the CEX prices, but I think that is a little bit more expensive in CEX. Cat's now back in. It is raining, so he's a bit wet, but he's all right now. Carrying on. So next up is uh, Wolfenstein Two, and that was ninety nine p. Again, there seems to be quite a few sort of different versions of Wolfenstein um, in this generation of consoles. It's like new blood and yeah just i don't know i've lost track of what wolfenstein games there are but um wolfenstein 2 um i can't remember what the oh the new colossus um so i've never played this one first person shooter looks all right but yeah 99p next up was greedfall now it does say 99.99 on the sticker but i can assure you i didn't pay 9.99 for it I actually paid two ninety nine for this. Um, yeah, again, I think this was an Xbox One exclusive. I think um, don't know a huge amount about it, um, but at that price, it seemed like a decent pickup for two ninety nine. I'm just going to move those over a little bit, uh, and then we also have Final Fantasy Type Type O HD. Um, again, I don't know a huge amount about this one. Um, I've seen it on the shelves a few times. I'm not sure which Final Fantasy it's actually linked to. I think is it 15? I think it's linked to 15, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, always quite happy to add uh, a Final Fantasy game into the collection. Wherever I'll ever actually get a chance to play it, I'm not sure. But yeah, 199 So all of these games were included in the pre-owned section and we were in the 3 for 2 offer. So, um, now what I kind of realise is that when you do the three for two offers, they always knock off the price of the cheapest. So when you buy three games, they'll they'll knock off the price of the cheapest game. So had I maybe been a little bit more clever with these games, I probably could have worked it and saved a little bit more money. Um, but I was taking, or I wanted to get nine games, so I probably would have had to have gone back a couple of times and it just felt like too much effort to do that for the, the sake of possibly one nine one ninety nine over a ninety nine p saving, um. So I did just buy that lot in one go, um. That lot cost overall, um. So they clocked all in all together twenty four ninety nine, uh, with the three for two offer that knocked it down to nineteen pound ninety four, and then I actually had some credit on my game reward card which I've been saving up on there for years. I don't know how long I've never not used it for a long time. Uh, so I had £3.76 on there as well. So that brought the total lot of these games 
that's that pile, to £16.18. So I think for that lot, when you think um, the likes of that Gungrave Gore and Tekken 7 and Kingdom Hearts are in there, £16 for that lot is not bad at all. Um, but the same night, I did nip back in just after because after I'd sort of picked up all these and gone to the till, I did notice a lad behind the counter going uh, with a pile of games um, to sort of stock up some or throw some more uh, some more pre-owned games onto the shelves. And um, so about half an hour later, I did nip back in just to see what else he put out. And I did pick up another three. And these ones were dirt cheap. So I also picked up Bleeding Edge. And that was 20p. Uh, Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. And that was 10p. And also Project Cars. And that was 49p. So... With the uh, well, with the sort of discount, or they knocked off what was it, um, 10p, which was the cheapest one. That was like another 70p for those three games. Essentially, that's what I paid for those. So overall, 13 games. I've paid about 18 pounds for those. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, a lot to get through, a lot to sort of catch up on and play. Um, but yeah, how often do you manage to get sort of like a stack of games like that for you know 18 pound? Um, so I was really happy with that. Um, but yeah, it did sort of get me thinking about game in general. So I'm just going to grab another cup of tea and I'm going to go over my thoughts on game in the UK and where I think it's going next. So grab my uh, cup of tea and yeah, so game in the UK. So if you're watching this video um, from in another country, uh, you know, abroad, obviously game is or has been our sort of, I'd say number one um, new sort of game shop um, that we've had in this country for, I don't know, for as long as I can remember. For as long as I've been a gamer, game has always been sort of there on the high street. So I started collecting games back in sort of 1991, 90. Um, so yeah, I mean, game's been around for a long, long time under a few different guises as well, I think for a long time. Um, there was a period where they were called Electronics Boutique and then they went back to game. Um, so they've had sort of various rebrandings and they've had sort of different um, ways of having the store set up and the way they kind of approached selling games. Um, but certainly over the last two years, we've seen massive changes in this country with the way game is sort of seen on our high streets. And the high street is probably where the biggest change is because the, the number of game stores on the high street now is in massive decline. There are very few game stores on the high street now. The vast majority of them are <clears throat> sort of included in small corners of um, Sports Direct stores. Um, there is one in Manchester, which is in a House of Fraser store. And I think it's House of Fraser who now own game overall. I think they're all part of the same sort of group. Um, but House of Fraser bought a uh, game. And yeah, gradually they've been sort of taking game off the high street, which is fine. Um, you know, it's, it's a different sort of way of selling. They're, they're, I suppose they're trying to save money on rents and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, these game stores that are in Sports Direct... They're not quite the same. They they they're not quite the same. They're usually very hard to find in those stores. They're usually uh, plunked in some sort of far far flung corner of the stores, um, and they do vary in sort of sizes as well and what they stock. But still, over the last I'd say sort of year, it still has been worth going into game to have a quick look and see what you can find. I personally don't buy new games from game. I couldn't tell you the last time I bought a brand new release, if you like, from game. In fact, I think the, the last time I bought something new from game was my PlayStation 5, partly because it was during that mad rush to try and find stock, um, and it was the only place where I could get one. So I think, actually, that was probably the last new uh, purchase I I got from a game. So again, that's going back, you know, two, two years. Um, so yeah, so games changed massively. Um, over the course of the sort of last two years, um, I mean, and, and we know why that is, and it's partly down. Well, it's it's hugely down to the fact that physical game releases are obviously on the decline. 
So you, you look back over the last few generations of console and we've, we've gradually seen less and less sort of physical games releases. The peak was obviously sort of during the Xbox 360 period and the PlayStation 3 period. You know, there was huge amounts of games. PlayStation 2 probably as well was the same. But certainly since that generation, um, we've seen each gen after that, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, now PlayStation 5, Series X, the amount of shelf space being given or needed to sort of stock both of those two generations has gradually got smaller and smaller. So you compare how many PlayStation 4 physical games there were compared to PlayStation 3, I'd say at least half of that. You go into a game sh GameStop, game sh <laughs> there is GameStop, but game store now and look at what PlayStation 5 physical games they have and a few, you know, nine times out of ten, if you go into one of those stores, they'll probably have two shelves of PlayStation 5 games, which is, you know, if you think back ten years, that's amazing to think, really, um, and quite sad in some ways. Don't get me wrong, I totally understand why, you know, uh, physical games are starting to get phased out. They want to go down the physical, uh, the, the digital route. Um, but there is obviously still a market for physical physical games as well, but it is in the decline. And that's where game is probably now sort of seeing the future. They're seeing that the fact that, you know, this is the last sort of possibly the last generation where physical games are going to be available. And they are now having to adjust um, with what they actually stock in their stores. So, we, you know, we've seen over the last, again, sort of two years, perhaps the amount of shelf space given to games, physical games has uh, decreased massively. And the vast majority of these stores now are full of everything else. So board games, gaming merch, um, accessories, T-shirts, toys, memorabilia, all sorts of other stuff. Still sort of semi-game related to games. But games themselves are very much now out of focus with game, which is you know quite sad really. The other big thing that's happened recently, obviously, with game is the fact that they are no longer accepting um, trade-ins. So you no longer allow, you know, you're not allowed to, um, or you no longer have that um, access to trade your games in with game. I personally haven't traded a game with game for. <sighs> I'm trying to think when the last time I actually did it was. And I think possibly you're talking over 20 years ago since I last did that, because of the prices that they used to give you. And CEX is obviously. The market leader when it comes into it comes to sort of trading in games um <clears throat> but they are now sort of stopping the tradings of games but with that they're also now decreasing and phasing out the stock of pre-owned games now for me and i think for a lot of other people as well the pre-owned game section of game was what was the pull for for us really so like i say all those games that i've just shown you they were all pre-owned games I very rarely look at the, the sort of uh, the, the the racks with the new stuff on because they tend to be quite overpriced. I can go to other places to find them cheaper. Sadly, Smith Toys at uh, Smith's Toys um, are probably my go-to place for brand new games um, or Amazon online. I prefer to go into a shop and buy it physically just because I get the rush from doing it. Um, but game just has lagged behind really, both in prices. And the way they just sort of the whole sort of stores now are set up and you just wonder what they can do to sort of turn that around. Obviously, they're looking to now phase these pre-owned games out. I personally wonder whether they would have been better possibly attempting to take CEX on at their own game. Maybe they should have been looking to bring more pre-owned stock in and maybe even stock older generations. So, you know, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, Xbox X. 360 i watched a video from uh, i think it was brad on b rad um check his channel out it's really good great youtube channel he was on holiday and he went on a game hunt while he was over there i can't remember which country it was but he went to game in that country and um you know while i was watching it and he was taking the footage and going around the shop they actually still had in those stores um secondhand xbox 360 and playstation 3 and it got me thinking well, why do our stores not do that I know CEX has got the sort of market share of that now, massively, really. But you just wonder why game has sort of shied away from stocking some of the older generational stuff. 
Whether it would make any difference to them, I really don't know. But for me personally, I know it would pull me back into the store if they had older uh, retro games in their stores. They are a game store after all. And maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe game itself has now moved on from the whole sort of gaming scene or is trying to move on from it. And maybe it just needs now a complete sort of rethink, a rebrand almost, where it's not game, it's... I don't know. I, there'll be other people who could think of a, a name for it now, perhaps. But just general sort of nerdy geek culture um, that we all kind of love and adore. Maybe that's where it needs to go into. It could still sell games, I guess. But games is just not the focus. Get or games is not the focus of those stores anymore. And I find it quite sad, really. So, yeah, like I said, I was thinking about game in general just after I'd bought all those games. And it did sort of hit me and occur to me that chances are finding that sort of stack of games like that at that price is something you're just not going to be able to do that much more often in game. And I thought it's quite sad, really. Um, so that's why I just wanted to maybe include a little bit of my sort of thoughts about game in general at the moment and the direction it's going. Personally, on the sort of road that it's on at the moment, I don't see game lasting that much longer. Certainly not in this sort of present setup, if you like. Um, and I think it would be really sad, in a way, to lose them. Um, are they masters of their own downfall? Yes, to a degree. But they are also have been sort of subject to the the different changing uh, dynamics of the, the industry in itself, I suppose. So, yeah, quite sad, I thought. Um, but, like I always say, you just never know. So I am, I do keep check, you know, checking sort of certain game stores to see if they've got pre-owned stock. But the more I hear people talking about, you know, oh, I went to game, I went to this game, they didn't have any pre-owned stuff, they didn't have anything in there either. It's obviously all the stock of pre-owned games is now getting condensed to possibly those stores with probably a bigger footfall perhaps and once that stock is gone it has gone and we will have cex for our retro high street needs obviously we'll have ebay still and places like music magpie and uh, all the independent retailers as well um but certainly sort of high street will be uh, sort of less choice really and cex will pretty much be it Anyway, so that is pretty much the doom and gloom part of this video uh, done and dusted. I've, I've had, had my, you know, I've given you my thoughts. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what you think about game and, and which direction it's going. But anyway, let's uh, let's move on to the good stuff. So, yeah, some more gaming grabs that we've got here. Um, I think they are all CEX, actually. Um, I don't have any uh, footage this week uh, from, uh, you know, any sort of game hunts or anything like that. Um, I thought I'd save you more video footage of countless rows of CEX shelves and um, because you know we, we've, we all know what the inside of a CEX looks like um, I'm not saying I won't show CEX again on my videos but just for this video um, yeah let's uh, let's leave the, the outside footage uh, to one side for for, for this video um, partly because I didn't take any as well um, but I did pick up a few uh, in two sort of hunts if you like um, this one was from uh, this was the this was actually the sort of gaming grabs that ended my 10 day dry spell if you like um so the first one i got was nintendo touch golf birdie challenge it was one pound 50 on the nintendo ds um i do quite like golf games I, I don't i'm not particularly a big golf fan or anything like that um but i do quite like golf games um i used to love playing golf on wii sports um and i have quit, had a quick go of this i, I am utterly rubbish at it but it's one of those games where i think if you practice and practice um you'll get more and more out of it so um yeah one pound fifty again with cex i think the prices have gone up recently i'm pretty sure that was only a pound not long ago but um yeah still not bad value for one pound fifty nice and complete nice condition as usual and then next up we've got a couple of cheap ish uh nintendo wii games um, this one is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so this is based on the Nickelodeon show. It's only a pound. Um, I've seen it around once or twice, actually. For um, Like I say, it's only a pound. Um, so I'm assuming the quality of it is not great, but um, I'm assuming it's a bit of a sort of hack and slash type brawler um, for a quid, though. thought I'd give that a go. Uh, next up, and this is a series I don't have too many games of actually. Um, it's not, 
yeah, it's just not a series that's ever particularly grabbed me. Um, but I did buy a version of it on the PlayStation 2 not that long ago. Um, have given it a quick go, but not a full uh, run through. And, and yeah, quite enjoyed it. So I saw this one and uh, picked it up. And it is The Legend of Spyro, The Eternal Night. That was a fiver. Um, unlike a lot of Wii games in CEX, this was in really nice condition. Nice shiny box for a change. Nice and complete with... You know, almost brand new looking in manual there as well. So, um, yeah, five pound. I thought I'd pick that one up. I do like picking up Nintendo Wii games. I just think it's a great, great console to collect for. Um, I did break a little bit of a rule that I have with myself. Um, with all of like all the stuff I do on Instagram and all the stuff I do on on YouTube, I don't buy games purely just to fill content. I, you know, I don't buy games just just so I can show them to you on gaming grabs videos or you know post them on in, uh, on Instagram. Um, but with this one, I kind of have a little bit. Um, so I did. Was it a short or a reel? I think it was a reel a week or two ago on um, forgotten PlayStation uh, game series, and it did quite well actually. Um, I picked out four game series that kind of vanished, uh, and I want to see back. Um, and a few people kind of commented, really liked it, and suggested some other games that maybe I could do for another reel. Um, so I'm going to do that. But there was one game series which I don't have a single game for. So I wanted to pick up maybe one of them, um, partly just to sort of give it a go and play it, but with the main idea to be able to include it in this second uh, second reel. Um, and it is SOCOM. Uh, US Navy SEAL SOCOM. So this is one of the... Was it one of the earlier network online sort of games for the PlayStation 2? Used to come with a headset, um, but you can pick up the game only for 50p. So like I say, I have kind of picked it up just to do that reel in a little bit, but I probably will give this a go. But at 50p, um, yeah, it's, it's not exactly breaking the bank, is it? Um, but I know everyone you know used to love SOCOM back in the day, um, but I just never... I don't know, it never sort of occurred to me to give it a go. Um, so yeah, I might have a quick look at that because I think there is some sort of single player campaign on it that you don't need a headset. I could be wrong with that. Um, but yeah, so come. Uh, and then this one is... Um, so, so when I went to that CEX, I did go with the sole purpose of looking for that copy of, of SOCOM uh, and ended up spending, you know... Uh, about twenty pound in the end. Uh, most of it went on this game, um, and this is one that I have been after for a while. Now it's a game that I've already got. Um, uh, it's for the PlayStation original PlayStation, um, but I've always, always wanted it in one of the dual case, double boxes, if you like, and it's the original Tomb Raider. Um, so yeah, I have got Tomb Raider on the PlayStation One. I've got it in some strange kind of box where the, the front cover. It's like uh, it has uh, yellow and black stripes on it. It's some sort of like budget titles release, um, which is probably quite rare in some ways. But yeah, for some reason, I, I just have always wanted to pick up the the, the double boxed Tomb Raider, uh, a sort of original release version of this game. Uh, they had it in there. It was twelve pounds, uh, complete, nice with manual. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big Tomb Raider fan anyway as well um, so yeah that was a nice pickup came with a nice box actually there's a couple of slight cracks in it so I'll probably get away with that box I don't need to change the box out um, but yeah I was really pleased to pick that one up finally um, and I didn't think at £12 it was too bad and then just a couple a few others and one which has probably been my favourite pickup of the last few weeks um, I have actually taken the stickers off these ones because um, I've had them for a, a while um, but I can't remember how much they were. So the first one was Metro Last Light on PlayStation 3, limited edition, free DLC on that and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that was £1.50. Never played a Metro game, so quite interested to give that a go. Um, now, this one actually didn't occur to me that it was going to be such a bargain. And I really genuinely wish, A, that I'd not taken the, uh, taken the price label off it and... Um, or got rid of the receipt but i paid two pound fifty for this and it's the same price as what the sort of bog standard edition costs and my cat is at the door again in you go he's now in 
Um, that was the other cat. Um, it's uh, infamous special edition. So again, yeah, like I said, this clocked in uh, for two pound fifty on the shelves. They they were selling it for two pound fifty. Didn't think anything of it because I have got infamous already, but I really liked the look of this box. It's not in the world's greatest condition. Um, the sort of corners a little bit doggy there and there, um, but two pound fifty. Yeah, there's some sort of slight bending on the top of it, but yeah, two pound fifty. I thought that's um, that seems really cheap. I was just surprised to see it. I don't see it around that often. Really cool artwork on the sort of inside cover, um, and it was only the other day when I was checking uh, prices on CEX for something else, um, and I just. I came across um, the special edition on the CEX app and it actually clocks in for £12. So they'd massively mispriced this one. So I was really happy to get that. Um, amazing game. Brilliant game. Infamous. Uh, the whole series is brilliant. Again, this is one of the games I think they should bring back, whether it will ever happen. Mm, possibly. You never know. But yeah, such a great cover, this special edition as well. Um and yeah, for £2.50, I'll forgive the, the little flaws on the box. So that was a nice little addition to the collection. And then finally, and it's been a few weeks since I picked this one up. I think I may even pick this one up before my last gaming last gaming grabs video. Um, but just, I, I may have filmed the video and then picked it. I can't remember, but I didn't include it on that video uh, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, it's not often I get a chance to grab Super Nintendo games, but I've been lucky this year in that I've been able to pick this up and um, Zombies as well for the SNES, which I picked up from a car boot sale earlier this year. Um, so this one that I picked up, I saw it on the shelf at CEX. It was in the glass cabinet of Dreams. Um, I knew how much it was from the app, and the, but there were no stickers on it, which was good. Um, from what I could see on the shelf, it looked in really good condition. Um, and for the price, it surprised me actually how... Sort of relatively cheap it was for such a big name game and the game is of course killer instinct um it doesn't have the killer cut cd um but not many copies of this do these days i think most people if they do find a copy of that they sell it separately or keep hold of it and why wouldn't you um because it's an amazing soundtrack um this of course i picked up um just before they announced that it was coming out on switch online it's still better to have the boxed original copy of it. Um, I have put it into a box con box protector. Um, but like I said, the, the actual box itself is in really good condition, complete. So, yeah, I just thought it was a no-brainer to pick it up for that price. Killer Instinct, great beat-em-up. I love Killer Instinct. Um, I think in some ways I actually prefer Killer Instinct to Mortal Kombat. Um, it's a shame that there hasn't been more Killer Instinct games, but it has made me think I would love to pick up Killer Instinct Gold for the N64. So I am I am kind of now keeping my eye out for that game as well. But yeah, Killer Instinct, great little pickup, twenty pounds that was. And that is the gaming grabs for the last probably two weeks, two maybe three weeks. Um, yeah, really happy with some of those. I think I've got a great stack of games from Game. Possibly for the last time, which will be a shame. Um, but yeah, decent, nice little sort of varied selection of, of other games more recently. So, yeah, thank you for joining me once again. Um, always appreciate it. Um, I, I do these game and grab videos quite often. Um, so I hope you don't get too sort of bored of them. I'm trying to keep them as varied as possible. Um, but it's just nice to share. I like to show people the things that I've picked up and um, how much I've paid for them. Um, so yeah, I just hope you continue to, to enjoy these ga these uh, gaming grabs videos. Um, as I always say, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you can hit that subscription button, that would be massively appreciated. If you can give the video a thumbs up as well. And um, yeah, I, I don't actually plug my Instagram account that often on here. So yeah, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's the same uh, same uh, pixel poll underscore pxp. Give me a follow on Instagram as well. And all that's left to say is uh, thanks for your company again, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, everyone.